promised you we'd come back to Sky to see all the bits that we missed last time and we are here uh, and we found a couple of friendly locals who are going to help us to uh, see the sights of this particular corner of this amazing island. Yeah, so uh, I really can't imagine why they moved here. I mean, that's a pretty horrible view to wake up to, isn't it? I mean, yuck, that's just not very nice at all. There's no shops and there's no people and there's no houses. Why would you want to live here? I'm not actually here to see Sarah, Willie and Jack. I'm here to make sure that the thing that I put up last time I was here hasn't fallen off. I think De Niro was glad to be back. See these YouTube people? This could be a very long walk. We have to stop to keep filming no, it. Just... And you thought the view was pretty from down the bottom? Well, the more we climb this hill, the more you see and the more incredible it becomes. I mean, just look at that. That is untouched wilderness. Right, and because we are in the middle of nowhere and there are no sheep, do not tell any uh, Greyhound Club people that we're doing this. Come it. This is uh, De Niro finding out what his life is like as a dog. I think it's safe to say De Niro is behaving himself and he is following the man who he thinks has got the biscuits. I have a biscuit free zone. Go get Willie. And there's Jack, there's no show without Punch. Oh, you, want to know what, oh, okay. you want to know what a greyhound looks like flat out? Well, uh, sort of like that. And all the things that you think you know about Sky, do you know that they have wild horses here? And there's a white horsey having a lie down over there, uh, watching De Niro, and De Niro is watching him. Because I don't think he's seen a horse before, and I don't imagine a horse has seen a greyhound. It's difficult to tell exactly how much history is under your feet here, but everywhere you look there's little bits of walls and little platforms and little things that are obviously man-made, but long, long since disused. Right, we have been following what we thought was a wall up here, but it gets to the top of this hill and it just spins round and goes back down again. So it's not much of a wall, but what we have found up here is some really old hooses. Uh, there's a building there, and that over there, believe it or not, is the remains of two, possibly three buildings. But we can't really see what we're doing from down here, so what we're going to do is jump in the Scotland on a shoestring helicopter and get a look at this place from above. And we think what you have here is the remains of one or more black houses. What, I hear you ask? Well, for that we need a wee bit of history. Black houses were very common all over the highlands of Scotland and the Isle of Skye. They were simple, very often windowless structures with low doors that kept the heat in. And to further keep the place nice and warm, the family would share the inside space with their animals, which must have been very pleasant. The use of black houses as dwellings goes back about a thousand years, and if you look around places like Skye, there's still lots of remains, and indeed lots of renovated examples, and some that are still in use, very often as buyers, and have probably been in use for the last thousand years. And here you see what the black houses that we found today would have looked like. This one is actually on St Kilda, but there are similar restored and reconstructed ones that you can see on Sky. See, this is another wee bit where there's uh, walls, it's a wee, wee building of some sort, but who built it? And uh, more importantly, when? How far back in history are we going? I'll tell you what though, if this was anywhere else in Scotland, more accessible, historic Scotland, with a fence around it and a sign saying no access. It's got one way in, it's got really thick walls and uh, it's on top of the bit where they would have parked their boats if it was uh, built by the Vikings. So we don't know if it is built by the Vikings, but it's a nice thought in it. Big beardy men with helmets living here on Sky. This is just incredible. I know it's just a lot of old ruins, but if like us you're interested in history, this has got so much history. I mean, is this Viking? Does it go back to the Viking Age? Well, I'll show you why I think that it might. This is the wee building we were just looking at, and there is uh, a little pen of some sort, but down there is a sticky uti bit of land that looks clearly like it's been man-made. I mean, it's just perfectly that shape. And the local legend is that it's Vikings, and Vikings used to tie their boats up on the inside. So was this a Viking's house? Yeah, I don't know. It could be. You can't say it wasn't. And we can't say it was. And here you get a better view of that spit of land from Willie's drone shots. Now to me that looks totally artificial. There's no way that is a natural phenomenon. So I wonder if lots of stones from surrounding houses were taken down and dumped in the sea to build that wee jetty. Hello Mr Drone. Right, we'll get out your shot. You'll have to ignore the fact that the dogs are breaking the fourth wall by watching the drone. Whoops, wow. it got blown a wee bit there. So, Willie and Sarah have got a drone and we've got a camera on a stick. There's that wee settlement that we just walked past from my camera on a stick. Uh, we lost some footage of that supplied by Willie with, uh, with his drone, which will be really quite impressive. I cannot wait to see that. 
Right, and I know for the last three days I've been calling those big pointy mountains. They're actually called the Coolins. They're not called the big pointy mountains at all, but big pointy mountains actually works. Coolins might just be a uh, Gaelic for big pointy mountain. While we were up here on the higher ground, it was actually pretty easy going. The ground was flat and the grass wasn't too long and uh, De Niro didn't seem to be complaining. We are wondering how long this path has been here and how many centuries people have walked up it for. Uh, and it's not very well used today, but it may have been quite a highway back in the sort of the Viking times, a Viking highway. And look at Jack Spaniel's goal. We were going to walk about 8 kilometres today. He must do about 30. He never stops and he never stands still. And De Niro did try to keep up and then thought, nah, too much like hard work. I think it's safe to say that De Niro is enjoying himself. And it's always safe to say that Jack is enjoying himself. <laughs> and here we have a greyhound enjoying himself. Uh, he's going back down to the dead sheep. Whoa! Emergency stop. Sorry, nobody saw me. It didn't happen. Right, get away from the dead sheep. Wow, get a look at that. I know I say wow a lot and words like pretty and, uh, well, wow, but wow, this is sky. If you get a chance, come up here and visit. It's amazing. I know that we are Scotland on a shoestring and we should be showing you cool things to do for nothing, but how cool is this? And it's absolutely free. We're just out for a walk. We know there's a lot of stuff about remote and rural, but this is extremely remote even for Sky. But look down there, the markings on the hillside down there are where uh, it was cultivated back in the day. And when you saw De Niro take his little tumble earlier, he's now, according to Sarah, a proper outdoor dog because he is covered in mud and needs a bath. We're following uh, Willie, who is on point duty with Jack, and we've found the little settlement we were looking for, so uh, hopefully it'll come into view before I run out of things to say. Oh, there it is down there, and uh, I've not run out of things to say. Isn't that lucky? We were heading towards that house over there, behind uh, Willie, Jack and Sarah, and Willie just let out a shout. So let's see what it is that he's seen that has uh, made him so excited. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at all the buildings and the remains down there. That is, okay, that's incredible. I, I use the word incredible far too much, but that is actually genuinely incredible. Uh, and the sheep have got it all to themselves, so let's go and dislodge the squatters and have a look round. The drone really gives you a new perspective on all these ruins, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut up and you can enjoy the pretty pictures from Willie's drone. So there you are, how's that for a view? And under the Scottish Outdoor Access Code you could uh, camp down there and that could be what you see first thing in the morning when you stick your head out the tent. If you can see anything, if it's not misty or raining, which does apparently occasionally happen up here, but we've seen no sign of it. Yes, so here's De Niro and the reason that he's looking a bit unsure is the drone has just been launched. So uh, Willie's going to do his magic with the drone and De Niro's going to say, what is that noisy wee thing? I don't like it. Here we see the YouTube movie stars between shots. Uh, Jack is having a wee wag of the tail and De Niro is, unsurprisingly, having a wee sleep. Here we are down actually in the settlement, in the ruins. It's really impressive. The walls are very thick. They're all uh, quite intact though. It's about you know, four or five feet tall. Really like this place. This is an amazing discovery. Well done to Willie for uh, locating it on the map. There's another view of it. This is just incredible. I mean, this is a place that virtually nobody ever comes because virtually nobody knows it's here and it's quite inaccessible. But that bit down there we saw on the drone footage and look at the wall built in front of it. That's a big platform at one point, I believe. I'm not an expert, but I do like uh, imagining things, as you know. There are just ruins everywhere and hovering above them is uh, Willie's Wee Drone. Hello, Willie's Wee Drone! And there is a big bird that is probably going to go and have a fight with the drone. Oh, oh fight, 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 fight. We now need Willie to get his drone and go and get some close-up footage of that white-tailed eagle that's just shown up above this place. This is just magical. I know this camera is not showing you a very good view of it, but trust me, that is a white-tailed eagle and it looks amazing. These will obviously all show up much better in Willie's drone footage, but all these buildings are just incredible and uh, very, very old. I mean, I've no idea exactly how old. We'll have to do a spot of research and we will let you know. Uh, so we've taken a wee wander away and uh, Willie and Sarah are now off exploring over there and we are heading for the little church and look at Jack Spaniel's go. Well, we've said church a few times. That is actually an assumption made from uh, quite a big distance away. So it may be a church or it may be something completely different. That's the problem with this sort of exploration. You say something once and then you decide for yourself that it's actually true, uh, but we don't know. We're going to go and have a look. Oh, this looks quite cool. On the way to the church, there's this little stone pile here. Is it a natural piece of stone or is it a cairn? And if it's a cairn, who built it and why? 
that's always the interesting thing, is it? Uh, no, I think it's just a natural piece of rock. So sorry, I've just wasted 30 seconds of your life. Right, I think it's time to stop for a second and just soak in the sort of sheer majesty of the surroundings of where we are. This is a wee, not very well known corner of the Isle of Skye, and there's our wee church we're looking for. And uh, just but look at the scenery and the landscape and the blue skies and the sunshine. And over there is what we think is the Isle of Canna, but we canna be sure. Sorry. Well, one thing is for sure, once we get back to Willie and Sarah's, De Niro is going to sleep. He is uh, probably quite tired after this nice long walk, uh, which he is not used to, and uh, is certainly not used to the countryside. Here we see the next obstacle in uh, taking a greyhound to explore an old church. We've got a river to get across and the dog does not like getting his paws wet. Although to be fair today, they are uh, very muddy. If Bex could see him now, I would get into so much trouble. Okay, De Niro is uh, not for crossing the water, so uh, I am going to have to carry him. Yes, this is actually going to happen, but luckily there's no one here to film it. So you just have to assume that he jumped bravely across the water like a big brave doggy. We did search up and down the stream to see if it was a greyhound friendly crossing place, but unfortunately there was not. So alas, there was only one thing for it. How embarrassing. De Niro is not keen on water. Bravery is about to happen, we think. Jack, Jack come on. Biscuits. Oh. oh. This is so embarrassing for both of us. You're about to get very wet feet and De Niro is not getting wet feet at all. That is the feel. That is, that is proper dedication though. That's a good dog dad right oh there. God. Well done De Niro. Well done. Oh. It takes a big dog to uh, accept a lift over a river. <laughs> <laughs> oh nice. Jack's like, excuse me? <laughs> Here he goes though, intrepid. Oh my gosh. Anything for Scotland or a shoestring. My shoestrings are a bit wet. <laughs> a wee bit. <laughs> Goodbye. When we say De Niro likes a biscuit, he, he does not discriminate. He'll have any biscuit, even mine. So after that slightly embarrassing interlude for both of us, we are now over the river, over the wee fence, and we are going to go and have a look at the church. Uh, I can't wait. I keep calling it a church. We'll find out if it is. This is cool. This is something that Sarah found inside the church. Number one, wide awake. Uh, no idea what that might be, but we are going to do a bit of research because that is... Now that's something quite cool. That's uh, been a cover for something. Wouldn't be electrics up here, but it's certainly been part of a plumbing system or maybe part of a flu heating system, something like that. It's uh, it's very cool and uh, very old. And here we are inside the little building and uh, there's one of the few trees on the island. It's found a nice little niche where it could have uh, had a happy and long tree life. And there it is, really through a hole in the wall. Hello! This is a magical wee place. I mean, it's really cool. I've got no idea how old it is. That wall's been covered in concrete, so it's, uh, you know, 1900s-ish. Probably quite recent compared to the things down the bottom of the hill. But just look at that. But don't look at that rock that's balanced on top of that wall, because that looks a bit precarious. We're not going anywhere near that one. Wondering about what this building was, it could well have been a church, because the church would be the most impressive building in the settlement. It would be where everybody went, it was the centre of the community, and the centre of learning, and the centre of everything. And these people had a faith that was tremendously important to them. And if you look where they were living in the winter, that faith probably is what kept them alive and kept them going. I'm sorry we can't give you any more sort of history on this place, but we genuinely don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's not recorded anywhere that we've seen. It'll be a settlement of some sort, blah, blah, blah. But we are not a history blog. We are a taking the dog for a walk blog, and the dog is loving his walk as much as he loved getting carried over that wee river. Uh, if he'd walked through the river, at least it would have cleaned his paws up a bit. So we are up at the church, and if you look down the hill from the church, there is even more ruins, and above that is the old rigs from the agriculture. So this was this was a bustling and big community for uh, the corner of nowhere. I've got to say something horribly sexist about uh, lady drivers, but what about lady pilots? Because there's Sarah doing her bit of drone footage of the wee building that we're going to keep calling a church. So uh, that is a really, really cool wee ruin. So we are now going to go and explore some more of the stuff around here. But first of all, I'm getting a shot of flying the drone. So uh, I'm going to probably decapitate someone, hopefully not myself. I'm really glad it's such a nice day because after my little dog carrying through the river episode, I have got very, very wet feet. I call this a man looking at some more ruins. 
and uh, there's the ruins that we are presently looking at. The old, uh, what we're going to keep calling our church. One thing about flying a drone, you can't really do it if you've got a needy spaniel demanding attention. It's definitely a wee fixer-upper, but I don't imagine the electricity supply and the broadband here is very good. This building is interesting because it's got all those big windows on the other side, but on the back side there's only two tiny little square windows. That's because there's no view here, obviously, because you couldn't really call that a view, could you? I mean, that's pretty dull and boring and not at all interesting. Yeah, right, look at it. Why did they build that up here? Well, it could have been something to do with the view. Look at that. And here we see my first ever attempt at flying a drone. There's me filming me. This turned out to be a very very expensive five minutes, possibly the most expensive five minutes of the whole holiday because after doing this I really, really want to buy myself a drone. When we got back to somewhere with a bit of internet coverage, courtesy of Willie and Sarah's Starlink, I did a bit of research to see if I could find out anything else about this little settlement, but there's really not been much written about it at all. All I did find out was that in the late 1800s and 1890 to be precise, there were three houses here that were recorded as being roofed and the rest were ruinous, so there were still people living here around about 1900. This is another building that could have still been in use, it's got quite a good quality of construction, so once I get the drone back to Willie, I'm going to go for a wee look at this. At this point, I had to give the drone back to Willie before I got carried away and flew it into something, but before I did I had one last look round with the panorama setting thing and how cool is this? This is so much better than having a camera on a stick. So this is the last little bit of this habitation, this is the bit you just saw me flying the drone over and it's uh, a different type of building, it looks much better made, very much more modern and right next to it is one that looks much older, so uh, there's lots and lots of years that people lived here for. It's interesting because if you look over there there are no windows, so it has a door on this side and as far as I can see, no windows. So uh, I wonder if that was like a storehouse or an animal pen or something. No idea, but uh, quite impressive. Annoyingly, this sort of place makes me wish I knew a lot more about history. So if I look at that line of stones there, are they uh, part of a wall or are they just a demarcation between the fields? They're really quite big, they would have taken some amount of moving. Right, must be about time for another panorama. And here comes Jack Spaniels. I said that and they had disappeared. So the sun is out and the sky is blue and the best of all is there's none of those little tiny flying things that bite, what are they called? Oh yeah, what we need is our word of the day. So if the midges were here you would know all about it because you would be getting eaten alive. And here we see Jack Spaniels doing his uh, piece to camera with William Zera. Look at him go. Are you watching, De Niro? De Niro, are you watching? Yay! And here we see De Niro not handling the boggy conditions very well. I think he's just about had enough of exploring. But he does seem to quite like a little snack of sheep poo, which is a, a worrying development. I, uh, I'll have to check that it's not harmful. I've been told that it isn't, but uh, fingers crossed. We'll see what it does to his uh, digestive transit tonight. Alright, I said we were heading back and then up there on that hill there's what looks like a fence post in front of a cave and obviously if it's a cave you have to go and explore it, that is the rules. So our cave isn't actually a cave, our mysterious thing is a fence post but look at that view, we have climbed quite a lot of altitude and it is worth it. There we have she walks she paints and there we have he walks he pants. We were all the way down there, and now we're up here to find it's a small alcove with a fence post in it, and uh, I'm sorry to say it was my idea to come up here, so I'm probably not going to get spoken to. Over there, that is the Coolins again, all uh, wrapped in cloud. That is so pretty, and they're not the big pointy mountains, they are the Coolins. And when a sheep put in an appearance while we were on the way back, De Niro was too tired to actually care. That is uh, quite a nice view, isn't it? With uh, Willie and Sarah in it. Once again, we uh, hear Willie exclaiming in excitement that he's seen something cool. So let's go and uh, oh my gosh, have a wee look. Oh my gosh, that is, uh, that is splendid. Uh, there's Sarah and Jack Spaniels enjoying the view. And what a view it is. I mean, look at that. That's looking up uh, towards the head of the loch where you can see the little scattering of uh, houses and habitation. It's really, really sparsely populated, but really, really nice. So there's that uh, spit of land that sticks out from the coast. That's got to be man-made. I mean, that's just piles of rock that have been dumped in that place. And there's an old building down there and a slightly newer building. And there we have the old graveyard and churchyard, which is rumoured to be the oldest graveyard in Europe. Now, there are two churches there. One is medieval and one is 17th century-ish. So uh, we're going to go for a wee look. This is the little churchyard and this is absolutely incredible. I mean, photographs really, really do not do this place justice. There are uh, gravestones with swords on them, there are old Celtic crosses, this is just so cool. De Niro is giving me a look that says, you have made me walk far too far today. 
And with one last look round just to check out the scenery, we headed back down the hill to our starting point and then we travelled back up to the Sky Life Cottage. And that's our little explore done. Sherpa Tensing here tried to take us to find two 8th century pillars, but unfortunately all we found was a bog that is at least half a greyhound deep. When Beck sees the state of our pooch, I am in so much trouble. De Niro and I had had a magical day out with Sarah, Jack and Willie, but we headed back down towards the house because all good things must come to an end. But this day wasn't quite ready to give up on giving us excellent things, there was still more to come. When we got back to the Sky Life hammock, we were sitting there and De Niro collapsed in an untidy heap and then he went missing. So we thought, oh dear, a missing greyhound is never a good thing, what sort of mischief is he up to? And it turned out he was indeed ready for his bed. Or actually, technically, what he was ready for was Jack's bed. Good job the little spaniel didn't see that De Niro had pinched his bed or he might have been a bit peeved. I am not in this bed, it's not me, you look at someone else, I'm a good boy. <laughs> I am a black and white spaniel. Nothing to see here. I hope the jar doesn't come through. Right, well, once again, thank you for watching this episode of Scotland on a Shoestring. We have visited the Living the Sky Life house, we have seen the old ruins round about, and now we are having a beer on the hammock. Hey. So as always, if you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and all that gubbins, and we'll see you soon for more Scotland on a Shoestring. Okay, so that was supposed to be that, but as we sat around the fire pit at night, in the dark, enjoying the general ambience of being on Sky, I went up to the van to get De Niro's coat, because it was getting a bit cold. So I got to the van, and when I got there in the pitch black and looked up, I saw this. A truly magical way to end what had already been a magical day. We don't like poo, we don't celebrate poo. We definitely don't eat it. Right, De Niro, repeat after me. Sheep poo is not a snack. Sheep poo is not a snack. <laughs>